Welcome to Film Wax Radio. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Great to be here. Hi, Destin Cretton, filmmaker. The film is called Short Term 12th. We saw it at South by Southwest. Congratulations. Oh, oh thanks. You got like the big award, right? Yeah, we got we, we won the jury prize and the, the jury. audience award. Oh, yeah. not bad. That's well, cool that you were at South by. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, well, I try to go to that one. You know, if I, I, it depends. I have a small child, so I don't do as much traveling as I probably yeah. would have otherwise, which is great. But, um, you South, know, South it's one I, probably not a good place to take a small child either. Oh, that's not the option. It's more like just that I, I kind of pick, have to pick and choose which s- festivals I would go to. Right, right. But, uh, you know, that sort of, sort of, that, that, that would be, uh, I think, a default because it's sort of like that kind of shows me the films I'll probably want to focus on for the coming year as far as like uh, films to, to include in the podcast. Oh, cool. So, yeah, you know. I had a, yeah there t- were some extraordinary films there. I, I had such a good, such a wonderful experience at that festival. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was it that was particularly uh, memorable? I, or the, the experience was memorable for me because just because of the the attitude of both both the staff and the filmmakers there i think it was it was a the environment uh, came from the attitude of of the staff of the the of the festival and i think trickled across to everybody but it's just like a such an open non-judgmental non-pretentious like if we we like what we like and and we you know we want to put yeah. it on display whether that's like a you know whether it's like a, a heady art film or just something that's silly and and fun you know so I I really like that yeah there's sort of a geek level to yeah. the 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 people that are going to the movies like people who just yeah. want to see as many great yeah, films as yeah. they can squeeze in on their you know stay during the South by Southwest it's, it's true um, so actually it's funny because I had seen I am not a hipster. Oh, cool. And, you know, forgot. Not that I saw it, but for kind of didn't realize until I was going over the press notes beforehand that that was your first feature. Yeah. yeah. So I, I said, oh, that's great. I, I've seen now both of your films. So <laughs> it, it kind of, I tried to do that, you know, as a rule. How did you see, where'd you see Hipster? So at, uh, probably on Hulu or Netflix, yeah. Netflix or something. I don't. I think that's where. a great movie to watch on a small computer screen. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. I think actually, I think I might have seen it even on a bigger screen because at home I have a, a not an enormous TV by any stretch, but uh, oh, you know, nice. it's, it's on there. Oh, I, nice. I have uh, the Apple TV and I try to see some things on there that I that I've missed during the rest of it. And I I didn't really know much, but it just certainly had a great title. Both yeah. your films do. And um, so it just sort of said, oh, let me check this out. And I'm starting to watch. And I just all of a sudden, oh, I've watched the movie. So, and then, but I don't, I think I, I don't remember if I saw that after. I might have even seen uh-huh. it since. I uh-huh. don't know. I can't recall. It's not important. <laughs> we're, we're, we're here to talk about Short Term 12 anyway. So, although, but, you know. But it's, it's the yeah. same, a lot of the same team from, yes. from Hipster just jumped right into this one. We, we shot the, both, both movies almost exactly a year apart. We right. have almost the same shooting schedule one year later. So it's my same composer, my same DP, same one of the same producers on both, and it was, it was like the team just jumped, jumped yeah. ship. When you say composer, you're talking about the score, obviously, as opposed to because a, a hipster yeah. is about a musician. But so yeah, that so, but hip, hipster was written. All the music was written by Joel P. West, who also composed the one piece of score in hipster and and then he he composed all the score for short term 12 as well oh great okay so after a less sympathetic character Mm -hmm. (laughs) you go to the opposite side of the spectrum with a short term 12 it's also uh, more personal going deeper and also going from your own experience right Mm -hmm. with the script of short term 12 yeah and these characters are are certainly sympathetic here now you're not there's 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 no irony in the film, which is really I think one of the reasons why people are connecting with it because, but it's a very earnest, straightforward film. Yeah, we want to just we, talk uh, about, like, the, also give the, a little bit of the background of the film too. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think a lot of that just stems from my my own uh, a- experience um, working at a place like this, but also my the respect that I have for people who work at places like this and 
and the respect that I have for for kids who are experiencing things like this. My first job out of college was was working at a residential facility for at-risk teenagers. Do give a little bit of a synopsis of the film. Yeah, Short Term 12 follows Grace, who is a a young female supervisor at a residential facility for at-risk teenagers. And uh, the the movie follows her through a, a portion of her life that is consistently and re- repeatedly forcing her to to think about things that she has been trying not to think about since she was a kid and forcing her to deal with these things while while she's simultaneously trying to help these other kids but every any time she's trying to help the kids that she's working working with she's just further reminded of the stuff that she's not dealing with herself so that's that's the uh, the journey that you're going on is is completely through the eyes of grace the the one lesson that i continued to learn while i was there and that i i still uh, resonates yeah still resonates with with me and i still think about it all the time is is that there there is there is no hierarchy and there shouldn't be and and there's there the line between caretaker and the the people who are receiving care is very hazy and and to me um what what i found at least in my position what i found to be the best relationships were built on mutual trust you know between myself and the kids and myself and and the counselors and that and that something you know that i i try i try to to carry on into the rest of my life so i think that you know that that definitely um, tra- we tried to transfer that into the film, and we tried to also transfer that into the way that we made this film and the relationships that were happening off camera. We tr- we tried to um, create an an environment that was as close to a healthy family as we could. Uh, so when you were you know it wasn't that many years ago, I'm assuming, but when you worked at the at this uh, at this home, um, but uh, how quickly did you realize you kind of couldn't you had to get past the counselor patient for lack of another term relationship you know that was there too i'm not saying it wasn't but you had to kind of get beyond there as you said you had to be available a lot more emotionally than a right lot to, in order to really make a difference right yeah the, it was a you know it was a lesson that i learned pretty quickly that i was not so dissimilar from a character yeah. in the film called uh named nate who is the new guy and right he comes into it with a savior attitude uh which um is quite unhealthy and and puts himself on a higher plane than everybody else there and i think um i i had a bit of that when i started working and was expecting to just make a difference you know but which isn't a bad thing but it Mm -hmm. it was it it was in a (laughs) unhealthy and naive a bit and i i think i got sniffed out pretty quickly you know kids definitely do need need structure and need a leader and and, um and i i do think that they're a big part of of the job there is to is to be that be that security and be that that safety blanket for them Mm -hmm. um but at the same time they also need to know that they're being treated with respect and and not being looked down on you know and and I think for me, what I found over and over, um, the more I got to know these kids, but and also the more that I get to know anybody, I, I, I quickly find that I am so much more similar to them than I mm. initially expected. Um, and that al- almost always my prejudgment on a person is wrong, you know? Uh, it's a great lesson. Yeah, it, it, it is. And, the, and that's something that, well, you know, it's one of the themes of the movie. It's, we, we do start off most of these characters with, most of these characters are, are characters that are easy to have assumptions about. And we, you know, we hope at some point in, in the film that you're caught off guard a little bit by who they really are. Why are you so nice to me? Well, it's easy. You are the weirdest and most beautiful person that I've ever met. Hey! 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 Hey!
you need to tell me what the hell is going on. You have to let me in your head once in a while. I'm just gonna go nuts. We have a new member of our community. She's been in and out of group homes for dangerous behavior. I told her father we take good care of her. I take good care of everyone. Happy birthday. to talk through some of this stuff. Too. All right, now. I just need to work. Jaden, come on. Please, just open the door. Whoa, whoa. Ah, ah, well, Short Term 12 is about this period of time at this... Um, you know, home for at-risk teenagers, and but it's interesting because the it the the story sort of revolves around the main character of Grace, played by Bree. She, Eating she, some she, salad. She come over here and visit for a moment. We're just talking about you. Say hello to friends at Rooftop Films. <laughs> Hi, Rooftop. Mm, burrata. What are you eating? I'm having a burrata salad and um, a very expensive juice that I'm happy I didn't have to pay for. It's really good. Hmm. Does it is it taste I'm expensive? Sure. I got mango. Man- a mango smoothie. Oh, you got a smoothie. I got the spicy lemonade. Yeah. So good. Yeah, it's tasty. Are you excited about uh, the outdoor rooftop film screening coming yeah, up? I love rooftops. And rooftops in New York, especially. And movies on rooftops. And short term 12. We were just talking about your character and that how the line between an, like a counselor and an at risk at risk person was oh. blurred. Because very quickly we learned that you're carrying around quite a lot of emotional baggage. I don't mean to interrupt your lunch, but how? I just take my last bite. Oh yeah. Yeah, hop in. Well, Bree, you play you play Grace. I do. Uh, tell me, like, how you did come upon the character of Grace, because she sort of represents, in some part, your experience. Dustin and I were talking about the fact that he kind of had to let go, let go of a lot of these structures about these relationships between uh, counselors and 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 the the children and the sooner you do that i think this the sooner you have opportunities to really connect in a real way with those those teens so to to be clear on what that means of of letting go it it does not i mean to me it does not mean letting go of the fact that your job is to be the enforcer of rules um not to like let go of and that say, oh the rules don't matter i don't yeah, need that handbook it's, and it's, I'm- it's and I mean for me it was letting go of an attitude of like um, I'm the teacher and I'm not here to learn. It was it was um, letting go of that attitude and realizing how similar we all are, but still realizing that it's very important to to be a strong pillar for these kids, you know, but not to be looking down on them in any way. Just to be just to be clear. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like, just because you have a child doesn't mean that you're instantly no longer a child anymore. I mean that in the best way. I mean, yeah. you have to grow up. You have to have structure for the kid and do all those parenting things that I so look forward to doing. But I think there's so many, there's been so many interesting moments, even just with my mother, of times when she's learned things from me just from people who grow up with different life experiences and different ways of learning new things and... Whenever a person shuts themselves out completely from the idea of learning or they get too stuck in thinking that things have to be a certain way, there's, you know, there's no growth anymore. And, and kids are pretty brilliant and very honest for the most part. There's less affectation. So there's, there's some real wisdom in that. And I, I think in, in this movie there are not moments where a character is giving direct advice to another character but most of the time when that that happens it's actually the kids giving it to grace it's it's not the other it's grace learning learning these epiphanies or having a mirror put up to her uh, through conversations that and things that that the kids are saying to her as opposed to her being being the the, the teacher in every relationship you both are describing how kids, they haven't had that level of honesty sort of socialized out of them yet. So they, you know, they are able to, as you said, sniff out truth um, and they, uh, or be very, very, very truthful. You know? You're n- yeah, go ahead. I just, I just stole her for a yeah. moment, but I did. We, we, we pulled her over. <laughs> yeah. Go Thanks, so. Bye, Bree. Yeah, nice meeting you. Bye, bye, rooftoppers. Are they on the rooftop yeah. right now? 
I appreciate it. Thanks. Nice meeting you. Good luck. Nice I'll, see, I'll see you again in a couple of days, I guess. Thanks, Bree. That was nice. That was Bree Larson, who plays Grace. And so it sounded like the, the process for these uh, actors um, was pretty intense, developing their characters. And let me ask you this, too. Yes. It's intense story. Yeah. Uh, emotional rawness, something that could easily be very, very uh, present on a set like that. So I'm wondering what kind of set you were trying to maintain. I mean, uh, aside from the... Um, the subject matter. I mean, we were definitely taking taking the the story that we were telling very seriously. But aside from that, we had a ton of fun on set and made sure that it was a set that was really fun and lively, and and that the the kid actors yeah. felt felt like it was a playground, you know, and felt free to just to just try and be wrong and, and right they had to feel safe yeah to, totally right. yeah yeah because they were not professionals in in most cases right i mean they were all actors like they okay. all auditioned we didn't just go out and look sure. for look for people on the street yeah. um but some of them uh it was their first first film their first gig but you, you know like while while we were getting ready to shoot a scene you would hear um john gallagher jr who who plays Mason, one of the counselors, but you'd hear him just around the corner with with eight of our kids teaching them a game, that like a, a, a word game that they're going to be kind of chanting and playing in the movie. And and you'd see those types of interactions happening all the time. And it was, mm-hmm. uh, it was really cool. It was a really cool thing for me to see. It, it, was, it was a very... Um, a joyous set because I, I saw so many of the beautiful relationships that we we're trying to create on on screen. I saw them actually developing off screen and, and what a what a wonderful gift to the film because all of, all those relationships and real emotions did bleed onto what onto the screen, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden I started thinking about the fact you're from Maui. No. How much time have you spent in New York? In New York? Yeah. Um, I mean, not not. A, I've come out here quite a quite a bit, but not. I haven't spent like a lot of uh-huh. solid time here. But my my grandma, who she passed away two years ago, um, but she grew up in in uh, Yonkers, and so and spent her whole life there. And so oh. I would visit her. I'd come and visit her and take take the train out there and. Um, that was my my one big New York connection. It's New York. It's close enough. Uh, <laughs> so so, just tell me a little bit. Also, so when, when this during this period, were you on the mainland or were you uh, here, or were you were traveling? I, I don't take it as a youngster from from all the way from uh, Hawaii to to Yonkers, in other words, or New York. So um, when when I was visiting, yeah, uh, or was that since you, you yeah, left? It was, it was no, like we were, I. Like when was the first time I visited? It was actually the first time I visited was when I was in college, and then it became like a more regular thing. Right, because yeah. you went to school in in, in San Diego. In San Diego, yeah. right? Sure, sure. And now, are you still based in the South, uh, Southern California? Yeah, I'm yeah. based in L.A. in Echo Park in L.A. Right, oh, I see. So you haven't even had an opportunity to be at a rooftop film outdoor screening, have you? No, but so but short term twelve, the short played. Did it. Uh, for a roo- oh, yeah. for rooftop films, but I but they do Sundance shorts. But I missed it because it it was um, I think I was it was playing at the same time as the Edinburgh Film Festival, so mm-hmm. I was in Scotland at the time. I was really bummed I missed it, but yeah, um, I hear it was a fantastic <laughs> screening, <laughs> and I'm sure that experience will repeat itself for the feature version on uh, on Saturday the twentieth. So, what are the plans with short term after after uh, this screening? Do you um, have a theatrical. Coming yeah, up, right? we're going to be releasing theatrically in New York mm-hmm. and uh, and L. A. on August twenty third, mm-hmm. and in New York we'll be playing at the Landmark Sunshine, um, and and a, a second screening a second screen that I'm not sure what the other theater is going to be just yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then also in in LA um, at at the landmark there. You know, there's a landmark in Yonkers. Oh yeah, 
Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Actually, I, the reason I know this is because it's, it's an odd coincidence that uh, an, the, the podcast I went up today, one of my guests in my most recent show uh, has a documentary called yeah. The Act of Killing. Oh, uh, and a fairly intense. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've it's heard been on the that. I've you, heard that's so. amazing. I it haven't is. seen it yet, yeah. but I've heard. I've seen people walking out of that theater after watching Dazed. that, and they're yeah. just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. While your film is certainly by comparison lighter, so in a way it's good. To, but I don't recommend anybody see both films in one day. I'm <laughs> sure some people probably in the festival circuit have, but um, that's an intense day to spend. Uh, uh, but the filmmaker was saying his movie. Uh, his name is Joshua Oppenheimer. He his film, which opens Friday, uh, oh, wow. is opening. He said at the Sunshine Landmark in Manhattan and the one in Yonkers. Oh. So long story, huh. long story. And uh, just last question: um, I'm wondering if there's anything to put you on the spot. But is there anything that you took away when, after that you didn't anticipate that you you found out about yourself or life? I I mean I have a tendency to to be a realist so much so that sometimes it, it dips into pessimism hmm. um, that that's my natural the natural way that my brain goes and I, and I think this this movie is so not that and it, it there's there there is a lot of a lot of hope and a lot of very real real positive moments that are that that to me in in my experience um are equally as real um as the as the dark moments of this movie and and i think i think making this movie and experiencing um both the the interactions with with the collaborators of making this movie and also experiencing the conversations that i've been having with people after this movie has you know it I think it's it has made me a, a more positive person and made me uh, um, have a more positive outlook on on life and and in 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 my in in and strengthening this belief that I have that that life is is full of really hard difficult things but that there is it is also equally full of some of the most beautiful, beautiful things that you can, you can dream of. And, and both are equally as real if you're, and, and both are there if you're looking for it. And, and I've seen, I've seen it with like just working in a, at a place like this, working with kids who, when you, when you read their bio, when you see what they've gone through, you can't even you can't even put it in a movie. Like I couldn't put the real things that these kids have, like the, the specific real things that they've been through, because it is just too outrageous and horrifying. But to see those same kids laugh with each other and tell like jokes that make you fall on the floor, mm. like rolling around, and what and and still be able to be kids and and get through it like that there's it is it it's simultaneously such a blissful and hopeful thing you know and I, and i think both both realities i don't want to shy away from either one you know and the 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 ugliness is there and the beauty is there and i i i want i don't i don't want to lose sight of either so that's one thing I've learned. That's a great answer. <laughs> uh, <then laughs> no, no tr- truly, I appreciate your your openness uh, today, and uh, I just want to remind everyone that Short Term Twelve will have a outdoor rooftop screening on this Saturday, and it will be out in theaters on August twenty third. Yeah, I'm very excited. I hope um, I can't wait to go watch it at at Sunshine. That theater is pretty awesome. And at rooftop. <laughs> yeah, and at rooftop. <laughs> I should, say we go rain or shine. Yeah, we just have I umbrellas agree. ready. There you go. No, it's going to be great. Either way, don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm really excited. Thanks so much, Destin. I Thank you. It.